Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. You may have remembered a couple of weeks ago we highlighted a quiz for webmasters that Google released on their Webmaster Central blog. The authors of the quiz have recently released the answers and they can be found on their follow-up blog post at googlewebmastercentral.blogspot.com. Even if you didn't take the quiz, the answers are still well worth looking at, particularly if you're interested in SEO and how Google explores your websites. For this week's web design tutorial, we've been asked by X1F1 to demonstrate how to create a basic fading image slideshow in Flash. So producing a basic uh, transition slideshow in Flash is one of the simplest things that you can do. It doesn't require any uh, action script. You can quite simply uh, complete it on the timeline. So I've created a folder that you can download from our supporting blog post. And I have created a basic uh, action script to Flash page. And I've also uh, sourced three images um, on the theme of Mount Everest to use for the example. So all of these files are available on the supporting blog post at createdesign.co.uk forward slash blog. So my canvas size in Flash is the same size as each of the photographs that I'm going to use in my slideshow. So the first thing I need to do is bring them into the library by going to File, Import, Import to Library. Then I'm going to select all three of my photographs. That will then bring them through onto the library. So if I start with image one, drag that onto the stage, and then just align it to the center, either using the snapped grid or using the align settings over here on the right. So this is my first photograph, and what I want this to do is to be visible for uh, a few seconds, and then I want it to fade into the next photograph. So um, I'm going to give it some space now on the timeline. So I'm just going to right click, and insert frame, and this gives it 60 frames on the timeline. What I'm then going to do is to have a tra uh, fade transition of 20 keyframes. So if I insert another frame at 80 and perhaps just mark 60 with a keyframe, I can then make a new layer for my second photo. So I'm going to bring photograph 2 in at 60. So first of all, I'm going to insert a keyframe at 60 on layer 2. I'm going to drag picture number two onto the stage and again position it into the center. I'm going to insert another keyframe here. So what's happening between keyframe 60 and 80 is I'd like this, the new second image to fade in and then after 80 start its 60 frame period on the timeline. So I'm going to insert a keyframe at 140. I'm then going to insert another keyframe at 20 beyond that for the time that the next one will fade in. So each photograph is going to have a space of 60 uh, frames on the timeline while it's visible before the next one fades in. So again, I'm going to make the third and final layer for the third picture. Insert a keyframe and drag picture three onto my stage. Again, I'm going to insert a keyframe at 20. So this is where the new one will fade in. And then again, this will need 60 keyframes on the timeline. So I'd insert a, another keyframe at 220. And then I'm going to need another area, another uh, 20 frames for this one to fade back and go back to the start. So I'm going to put another 20 keyframes on at the end. So what I'm going to do now is create the tweening so that uh, the pictures fade. At the moment, if we test the movie, you'll see that our pictures load, but they won't actually fade, they just switch over to the next photograph. So in order for them to fade, what we have to do is right click, create a tween, and we need to do this on all at the start of all new layers. So create tween, and again at the end where it's going to fade back out. What I'm then going to do is click on click on the, uh, the keyframe at the start of the fade of the first one, click on the graphic, go to properties, color effect, and I'm going to change this to alpha, which is essentially the flash equivalent of opacity in Photoshop, and I'm going to turn that down to zero. So now at keyframe 60, it's invisible, but at keyframe 80, it's visible, so that when we now move across to 80, the picture's going to fade in. So we need to repeat this on the next one. So I'm clicking on the keyframe, 
click on the photo and go into the alpha color effect which by default is at zero and I'm going to perform it one last time on the last one. What I then need to do for the original picture is insert a keyframe toward the end so that it can fade back and begin at the start. So now if I go to test movie my photographs should rotate with the fade as you can see in the example. So next week we're going to show you how you can add, uh, in addition to having your photo slideshow, some little uh, button arrows to skip to the next photograph. And as I said, all of these files and the example are available on our supporting blog post in a zip folder. Last week we shared our third website tip for business owners. How to reduce spam emails being sent from your website's contact form. In continuation from last week, tip number four is how to prevent your email address being harvested from your website by spam bots. As we discussed last week, spam bots are automated computer programs that crawl the internet looking for opportunities to send unsolicited spam and to harvest email addresses for mailing lists. Aside from tripping contact forms, spam bots are designed to identify visible email addresses on websites. If your email address is visible in real text on any of your web pages, then it is detectable and available for spam bots to collect. Your email address may, may then be added and sold in mailing lists that are used to send spam, promoting products and services that are available on the internet that you're more than likely not interested in. So our advice is quite simply not to have any visible reference to your email address on your website. If you wish to avoid spam, you should solely rely on having a simple user-friendly contact form that won't give spam bots direct access to your email address. Website visitors usually prefer to complete an inquiry form rather than having to go to the trouble of loading up their email client. Thanks for watching this week. If you have any questions, comments or contributions, please leave them on our YouTube channel or on our supporting blog post at creadesign.co.uk forward slash blog forward slash videos.